Hey, 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 it is Bessie LB, and I'm back again with another episode for Ask Me Bessie LB. Let's talk about it. So again, we're continuing the five different points that I focused on in 2020, and today's one is creative abilities. Creative abilities. I have here in my notes what you're capable of doing and possibly working with others and supporting one another. Playing of trades and services. So creative abilities. In 2020, I spent a lot of time really letting my, like, my, my true juices of being a creator flow. I was just in a call the other day and we were discussing how we was discussing how 2020 took a turn on a lot of people and a lot of people just froze, right? They just froze right in their, in their steps, in their track and really had to think about what am I doing? What is happening in my life? How is it affecting me? How can I go forward? How can I kind of not be at a standstill and not be able to move on and be kind of like sold in this time, right? So as a creator, I took that as, okay, when we first knew we was in the pandemic for even two weeks, right, is what they said, two weeks, a month, whatever. I was like, look, this is like a vacation. How can I expand on my different creative flows, right? So I worked in a nine to five job just like most people. And I always told myself that I wanted to work for myself, right? I've always wanted to work for myself. And I just kept thinking how I would go to work, I would do my job. But it was just so frustrating to have to answer to someone else um, and just work for a big corporation and just be like, fulfilling this company's needs and desires. And I felt like I was stifled and not fulfilling my own. It was just stressful because it was just like, how can I have a balance to be able to do this job, make income, and pay for the things that I need right now, but eventually one day I can say, here's my two weeks, I'm leaving, I'm going to go fulfill my dream, right? That's what I kept thinking about even before the pandemic came. So once March, the end of March came, and we all was like having to stay in the house, I was excited. I was excited. Everybody else was down. I was excited. I was like, I don't care what's about to happen. I don't care if they said back in the day how they were saying 2020 was like the end of the world, whatever. I didn't care if the end of the world was coming in those two weeks or to a month, however long we was initially supposed to stay in. I was going to work on my business. And if I was going to die, I was going to die knowing that I worked on me. Like my grandpa says, I does me. I does me, okay? I had to work on me. So my creative wills was just going. Clockwork, clockwork, just going. I was like, all right, I got to do this. I got to do this, got to do this. At some point, I did become burned out a little bit because I was trying to like put my eggs in all these different baskets and just work on each basket. And it was just overwhelming and a lot. So then I started to just think about how I can just like slow it down try to focus on one aspect. A little bit about me. I have a fashion design background for my bachelor's. I have an interior design background for my master's. I mean, that means I do a lot of computer aid pro uh, programs on the computer. I do sewing, drafting, draping, all this stuff that I do. And I'm just like, baby, where do you start? Right? And then there's events that I get inside of. I like to do a lot of events, all this stuff. Where do I start? That was like mentally driving me crazy. So then I move forward and then I'm like, okay, this is what you need to focus on for your creative ability. And then that started to work. Um, the hard part was everybody tried to become a little creative. Everybody tried to dip and dabble into their like creative juices. I feel like everybody is talented and creative enough to do something in their life. They just have to find what it is that they need to do. So I already knew what mine was. I just needed to focus on it. But then it's hard because now we're trying to make it about a revenue, right? And I don't want to take away from the fact that it's my passion on top of trying to make revenue with it. So there's always that like thin line when you're 
a business person is how do you work for others, your consumers that's buying your product or your service, and how do you work to fulfill your soul knowing that this is something that you want to do possibly for the rest of your life as far as owning and running a business. So that was something that I thought about. And then I thought about the thing that I keep seeing on social media. I keep seeing on social media people really going in about Oh, nobody wants to share my things. Nobody wants to post my products. Nobody wants to buy my products. And the list goes on. Baby, you can't expect anybody to do anything. That's first and foremost. You just can't expect it. You would hope that your family and friends, usually that's your inner circle. And that's where you start to kind of like branch off your uh, business ventures. But you have to also understand that people are going to do what feels natural to them. People are going to do what's comfortable to them. And you don't need to take offense to it. You do as do as to others as you want done to yourself, okay? So that's what I do. I share people's business all the time. I may not financially be able to go out and purchase everything that people are putting out there. But for me, making sure that at least once or a couple times in a week I'm sharing someone's post telling people to go over here and do this service and buy this thing that's helpful to people's businesses and I would like if someone did that for me but but again I can't expect anybody to do that right so all I can do is be my biggest cheerleader and my advocate and keeps and keep pushing that's how I see it and then also the creative part of where I said trading services like I said, back in the day, you know, they would trade services. If you had the food and they had the wood and you wanted to trade that wood for the food. So, you know, your house is warm and that person's putting food on the table. That's what they did back in the day, which trading services. You know what I mean? So I think that's also important is offering discounts, trading services with people and letting people try samples of your stuff. That's a super important thing as a creator as well. Um, and really wanting to get your business out into the forefront. And then let's see for creative. I also had working with others right? Working with others, that's another thing. Not only trading your product and your services, work with others. Get a situation together where if you're an actor, you guys do skits together to get each other's names out. So now your social media handles is crossing different people's paths. If you're a dancer, all these dancers on social media, they're getting together, they're making little skits, little dances, and now their social media handles is out there, right? Um, and then just working together. I don't know, whatever the craft is similar to, work with people that's willing to work with you to kind of just like cross these paths of people's vision so your name is fully getting out there. That's super important too. It's not about you only. I try to tell people, don't get so combative and bit out of shape when it comes to someone that's doing something similar to what you're doing. It doesn't matter if someone's doing what you're doing. I always tell people, one of the things that I learned during the pandemic, I heard someone say is, if you go into the bread aisle, there's like 20 different breads, okay? If that one company decided not to create bread because one, the bread was out longer or whatever kind of other bread is out longer, that one bread company would not be in the store and selling and making money to whoever their specific consumer is. So you guys need to focus on that. Where y'all all have the same craft and the same message that you're trying to deliver, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your message will get across to your consumer. There will be ingredients. There will be something within your product that will be a focus of someone else, whereas this product would be more of a focus to another consumer. So that's important is working with the people that do the things that you do and, you know, learning how to give and take and keep some of your secrets to yourself, but some of the things you can share and it's not going to hurt you or that person, right? So that's really important as a creator. Um, let me know what you guys was focusing on as far as a creative person, not physically the projects you were working on, but what were you thinking mentally when it came to being a creator and how you can get your stuff out to other people and how you can support other people and then how you can work with another person to get your stuff out to more people. Let me know what you guys focused on.